Hey there, everyone. I just wanted to put together a, a video. Um, we're just showing off the basics of uh, how to create uh, a theme within CTC and with a couple of views. Um, and like I said, just to keep it real basic. And it's really aimed at uh, newcomers to uh, the community theme creator, just so that they understand uh, the basics um, where some of the options are, uh, how you add UI elements, what some of the UI elements do, what some of the properties do, uh, just so that um, they don't get frustrated. Okay, so I'll do my very best at um, walking through um, how you can create a very basic but decent looking thing. Okay, all right, so let's get started. And I'm using um, <clears throat> an early access build of 3.2 at the moment. Um, this version is not currently on um, Patreon. I'm yet to release this particular build. So if it does crash at any particular point, fear not. Um, <laughs> it will be resolved before uh, the final build. All right. So... When you download <clears throat> and unzip the Community Theme Creator, you're presented with um, the default theme that comes shipped with the app, and that's Theme Components, okay? And there are a couple of views that you can look at. And... Uh, I believe it comes with some wheel item templates and don't let this overwhelm you. I'll walk through all of this. But um, when you feel, when you get comfortable with using the, the community theme creator, then you can always refer to this theme and borrow um, certain components from it and copy them and paste them to your own personal theme and then obviously tweak up uh, whatever you've just pasted but it's here because it's really just um, uh, it's not even a theme but there's some good ideas in here that you know that you um, wouldn't have to start from scratch so you can actually just like I said kind of borrow some of these ideas and then tweak them up in your own theme okay but anyway, uh, we want to build a brand new theme, okay? So we are currently in the theme components theme. So just simply click here and we're in the theme manager. And this is the only theme that's available right now. So we go down here and create or click on new theme. And um, give it a name. Uh, this is something that you may want to add. Um, this is a demonstration of how to get started with CTC. All right. And then if there are people that you wish to thank, all of this will be embedded in the code when you publish. So it's entirely up to you what you want to do. I am not going to go through these options at the moment. Okay, we'll we'll leave that for another video. So really all we're doing here is just giving the theme a name. Okay. And here's our new theme. And I'm going to click select. So now we're in the theme. The first thing we want to do is decide how you want this theme to look. Right now, by default, and I'll do this again, move your mouse pointer over aspect ratio and uh, the menu drops down and this is where you can actually configure 
um, your overall look and feel of the, the theme, okay? So by default, it's set to stretch. So I'm actually using an ultra-wide display, but I've set my Windows resolution to 4K. Um, so had I not changed my Windows desktop to uh, 4K aspect ratio, um, obviously um, the, uh, the, the, the window here and what the theme would look like would be stretched, okay? To match my, um, my uh, monitor's aspect ratio, okay? So if you wish to develop a theme that's 720p, um, 1080p, 4K, with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, then specify it here, okay? And also, what you want to do, if you're going to publish this theme on Big Box, and you want to ensure that, well, I've designed my theme specifically for 16.9, regardless of the desktop resolution that other users are using, you always want your theme to be in 16 by 9, okay? So to do that, you just simply enforce this aspect ratio, and that's it. Okay, from here on in, we're now going to start constructing our views for our theme. Okay, so um, here we're in our uh, system view. I mean, you can hit the left and right arrows here to advance through the different views. Okay, but you can use the drop down. And we're going to start with the system view. That's our menu, our system options view, just to get things rolling. Now, before we do that, I have cheated. I, I do have some graphics folders. All right. So um, I've got a textured background that I wish to use. I have a carbon fiber border that I wish to use for video playback. Um, and uh, a real basic um, image that I'm going to use for the, the top of the, the UI display or the, 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 the top of the view, okay, that I can do some bits and pieces with, all right? So, uh, real basic stuff, okay? And then I have um, a star ratings folder and a battery indicator folder. And again, I'll explain all this as I go, all right? So, I want to add these graphics folders to this theme, okay? And you just simply click the menu button up here Click, uh, select open and select media. All right. You can ignore this default folder. We're not dealing with custom images at this point. And I'm just going to simply uh, copy and paste my graphics folders in here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> like I said, we're going to edit the system view and it's just a case of clicking edit view. And because I was working on uh, an ultra wide, my editor was off the screen. Okay. Because it will remember positions and sizes and window state and all this kind of stuff. Okay. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the default UI elements have been loaded into the systems view. As you can see, we have a, a text. I'm going to call it a wheel to text list. Um, and we have the license field. So what I'm going to do right off the bat, I'm going to unlock, lock, lock and unlock 
by default, it was this UI element license was locked, meaning I can't move it. I can't change the properties. So unlock. Now the properties for this UI element are unprotected, so I can change them. I want to change the location of the license. So I want it horizontally centered, and then vertically, I want it at the bottom. Okay. Um, for now, and then I'm going to lock it. Um, so let's start building or adding images to this view. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is add a group. And what am I going to call this? I'm going to call this, uh, I just double clicked on the name and it allows you to rename. So I'm going to call this background. And because this is the layer or group that's selected, we have a menu icon. And from here, I can select the UI element that I wish to add to my current group. Okay, so I'm going to select image. And again, double click, and I'm going to give it a name. And our properties are unprotected. As you can see, the UI element is right here. Okay, and you can size it and move it. But what I want to do, I want to fill the screen. Okay, so you just simply say full screen. And we currently don't have an image assigned to it. Okay, and that's fine. We just scroll down. And media folder. And this is where you saw me copy those three uh, folders into the media folder. So I'm going to select graphics and I'm going to select the background image. And that was our, that was the texture I was showing earlier. Now, if you notice, the image has now obscured the text list or the text wheel. Okay. And I'll explain that the way this operates is this list here works from background to foreground. So what I've done here, I've actually added a full screen image that is in the foreground and hence the wheel and the license, well, not the license, but the wheel is uh, being obscured because the wheel is now in the background. So all we have to do is just press and hold or click and hold on the group name and drag it to where you want it to be. I want it below the default UI elements, meaning the background image is now below the wheel. Okay. The license, by the way, regardless of where you place it, it will always be in the foreground. That was something that uh, I was told to ensure um, it was going to be uh, from the big box team. Okay. They, they want the license to be visible. So to ensure it's visible, um, even, even though that it may be placed all the way down here and you think it's in the background, it really isn't. Behind the scenes, it's setting its, what we call our Z order index. Um, it's, it's making it uh, right up there in the foreground. <laughs> um, but anyway, so now we have the background and let's add a few more uh, UI element, you know, bits and pieces. All right, I'm going to add another group and I'm just going to simply call this top. And again, this is the, the group that's currently selected. So I'm going to add, select the menu and then click on um, another image. And I'm going to call this bars. And I'm going to set it to full screen. Again, scroll down, media folder, graphics. And I've got one called red bars. And there's the red bars. 
Now, <clears throat> instead of simply adding, paste, you know, adding and then changing the properties, you can speed things up a little bit. I'm going to right click on bars and hit copy. And then I'm going to click paste in place and rename it. I'm going to call this glass and then select glass. But I want the image, I want the glass image to be above the bars. Okay. There you go. All right. Now, later on, what I want to do is jam some UI elements in between the glass and the bars. So then it truly looks like it's, uh, um, you know, there's some depth um, to these UI elements. Okay. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as such. Now let's focus on the text list itself. And that's the wheel. Okay. Um, let's see. So you just simply click on the wheel. And I'm going to scroll down. And we have some presets here for different styling. I'm not going to go through them all. You can certainly play. Um, I think I'm going to go with maybe six. So the selected item is slightly larger than the non-selected items. And I'm going to change the font. something like that. I don't know if I want this particular font size, but you can, you can certainly play with, you know, the font, uh, change it to 32. That might be okay. And then you can just simply change the width And then change the height. Obviously, it's going to reveal more more options. All right. And then we have, if you right click, so this is our UI element that's currently selected. You can right click. Whoops. What it's doing as I'm clicking, it's selecting glass because glass is full screen and it's also a foreground. So I'm going to lock that so it doesn't get picked up. It doesn't get selected. And then bars is being selected. So I'm going to lock that too. So now I can truly select the wheel and I can place it wherever I wish. Okay. So right click align and you've got some basic guides here so I can center it, right align it. But I can also, while the UI element is selected, I can use the cursor keys to do move up, down, left, right for fine adjustment or press and hold the shift key with the cursor keys and you can move the UI element in uh, larger, larger, larger jumps. Okay. It all depends on what you want to do. All right. But for now, I'm going to align, center. Um, I think that's good enough. Uh, maybe a little bit more like so. And we're going to change the color of license. So I have to unlock it because I'm going to change the properties. I don't want it to be white. So you just click the color. And you have the color picker. But what I want to do is use a color selector like that. So now it's red. And actually, what I want to do is just bring down the opacity a tad. Okay. 
And for the wheel itself, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So as you can see, white is the, the primary color here. So again, I click white, click the color picker, and I'm just going to pick a red. There's our red. And uh, yeah, yellow is pretty cool. I'll stick with the yellow. Now what I want to do, I want to add a shadow to this text, okay? And what I'm, what I'm going to do is encase the wheel inside um, a container. And then I'm going to apply a shadow to the container, meaning that whatever I throw into that container, uh, the shadow will be applied to the content, okay? I mean, I could easily apply the shadow to the, the wheel here itself, but when I end up copying this view to other views, um, yeah, there might be some other things that I want in this container that the shadow should also be cast. So let me show you. I'm going to add a grid. And I want the grid to be the same size as the wheel that I've got defined here. And, and as you can see, um, it's in blue. So I want the grid to be that size. And the, and the quick way of doing that is right click on the wheel and say copy. And then right click on the grid and say paste properties. And I want to paste the layout, which is the X coordinate, Y coordinate, width and height, all that kind of good stuff. All right. So I'm going to paste the layout. And now, as you can see, the grid matches the position and size of the wheel where I copied the properties from. So now all I'm going to do is move the wheel inside the grid. And as you can see, the wheel is now uh, content within this grid one. All right. So I'm just going to call this wheel container and now what we want to do is to add uh, an effect to this container so that everything that's inside the container casts a shadow which means the wheel will now cast a shadow all right so what we'll do wheel container And there's one thing I forgot to do. As this is the container, I want the wheel to fill the size of its container. All right. So, so as I change the size of the container, it's automatically altering the size of the wheel. Okay. And you can always hit Control Z to undo. All right. So, like I said, I want to now add a shadow effect to the container. And you scroll down, and here's your effect. And we've got some presets here. So I can say um, uh, shadow bottom. And you're not really going to see this too well. So what I'm going to do is change the shadow color to a brighter color just so that you can see it there. OK. So now what we can do, we can change the, uh, the depth and the blur radius like so. All right. Let's kick it up. I want it to be more so just so that it's kind of around left and right and what we can do here i'm using a, a mouse with a scroll wheel i'm going to press and hold the control key on the keyboard and as i press it and hold it down i'm going to use the scroll wheel i can zoom in and zoom out okay so if you want to make some fine adjustments, this is the way to do it. So I was looking at the effect and I can see that the yellow shadow here is being blurred to the left. 
and you can press the space bar and move. And as you can see, it's over here. So now I'm happy with this effect, but obviously not the color. So now I'm going to pick black. And it is indeed casting a shadow. And it's the opacity at 60%. I'm going to make that 100, considering um, we've got a very dark background. So let me zoom back out. Okay. Now, if you want to test how this would look in Big Box before you even publish to Big Box, the, see this controller down here? Double click. And you can click on the up and down. And as you can see, we've already got a problem. Because the selected text is... Uh, is um, you know, a certain percentage larger than the red. <laughs> it doesn't fit into this area. So we're going to change the width of the wheel container. Like so. And then I'm going to continue to scroll up and down through this list to ensure that all the menu options do indeed fit within the width and it looks like they do. Okay. So as I've just altered the width of this, I want to recenter it. So again, I can um, right click over here, or I can right click over here to align. And I'm going to say center. Okay. And I can bring it down just a, just a, just a tad. Okay. But again, if I want to test this out, this is what it would look like in big box. That's cool. If I don't wish to use a controller anymore, just double click on the, the gamepad and it disappears back into here again. Okay. All right. So, so far, so good. But this is rather bland. And I want to use this as a template for all the other views that we're going to develop. All right. So it's best that we kind of add as much as we can here, because when we copy, we can um, pretty much use this as a, as a foundation for the other views. So what I would like to do is maybe use a uh, current date in here and uh, the current time and maybe uh, a battery indicator in here. So if you were using this theme on a, uh, a laptop or um, um, you know a Windows handheld device like a ROG Ally or something, um, the battery indicator would actually show up. Okay, so why don't we do that? Um, so I said that I want to jam some information in between the glass and the bars. That way, it really does look like. Um, the uh, the information being presented is is uh, layered, okay, and it and it you know it looks realistic. So we want to add a text element because we want I think date over here. So we're going to add text, and I'm going to call this uh, system date. And I want it here. And we scroll down through the properties. And this is where I could say, you know, it is midnight. And it would appear in here. But let's just change the font. And I also want the font to be consistent. Okay. So I'm going to go up to here.
Now, what I'm going to do is auto size the height. Okay. So based on the value being placed inside this text UI element, I said auto size the height. So now I don't have to, I don't have to resize it vertically. Okay. I can just simply place it wherever I want and change the width. So I'm going to say the width should be here. Now, instead of a constant value, it is midnight. Okay. We actually want the system system date. All right. So we select, instead of a constant value, we're going to select metadata. And now we get a drop down. And we have a field called system date and time. And it's defaulting to, you know, whatever, whatever the default, but we want, we want the date. And that's going to be too big. All right. So we're, we're going to have to settle on something that makes sense. Uh, it's just not enough information. Now I can make the font a lot smaller. You know what, for now, I'm just going to do this. Okay. So. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. And like I said, I wanted system date to be in between uh, the red bars, layered in between the bars and the glass. So the glass effect is actually in, indeed over the top of the text. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the system date and I'm going to paste in place. Excuse me. And I make sure to rename this just so that I know what I'm dealing with. And it's selected. I'm going to press and hold the shift key and I'm going to press down on the right cursor key. Okay. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is uh, scroll down through the properties for system time. And we're just going to pick like that. Now we don't want the text to be left aligned in this example. I want it right aligned. Okay. And this is our text alignment here. So it's currently left aligned. We want it right aligned. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to point out is if you can basically see these blue lines here, what this is indicating is that this UI element here is aligned or placed at exactly the same Y coordinate as this one, and its height is matching the height of this UI element. Those are smart guides. So as you move UI elements around the screen, you'll see these guides appearing as they kind of match existing uh, top, bottom, left, right positions of other UI elements. So if you're trying to align based on neighboring UI elements, these smart guides will appear automatically. All right. So I mentioned that we wanted um, uh, the battery indicator as well. Okay. And in order to do that, I, I copied some images earlier when we started this theme. So this is an image and I'm going to call it, whoops, battery indicator. And again, I want it layered. I want it under the glass. And 
And the media folder for this one is uh, battery indicator. But before I go there, I have to pick metadata. And for some reason, I'm not allowed to choose the battery indicator. Oh, that's a, that's a bug with my early release. All right. Well, for now, I'm going to put it here just for the time being. And I'll, when we get to the next view, that will allow me to um, uh, select the um, battery indicator. But for now, um, I think that's that's OK. Is there anything else I want to do? I don't want this in white. Um, I think I want to use the same yellow that I have here, or maybe a more kind of muted yellow. All right. So system date, click on color. I'm going to use the color picker, dropper, go after that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop it to, I don't know, 80%, like so. And I'm going to right click on the color and hit copy, and then go over to the system time and right click and paste. Okay. At this point, I think we're done, at least with the system options screen, okay? Um, or at least um, the, one, the one thing that we could do is, um, mm, yeah, why don't we do this? I'm gonna copy system date, paste in place, and I'm just gonna say, options and then I'm going to scroll down it's going to be a constant value and press and hold the left shift key and the cursor key and I'm going to move it to um, the edge here And then we want to align center. And then what I want to do is increase the font size. Okay. Like that. Okay. And again, it's still under the glass. All right. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it like that. Hit save. And that's our first view. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do is, um, as this is a text list, we want to set up the um, filter list, which utilizes a text list for platforms and then ultimately we'll do the same for games okay and then after that we'll get into more of the the graphical wheels all right so now what we're going to do we're going to copy this entire view and we're going to copy it to a um, text-based view for platform selection okay um, and to do that, you just right click where it says configuration default, copy, select the drop down for the view, and we want to go to text filters view. All right. So obviously we've got nothing and we have an empty uh, uh, ellipse here indicating that there is no uh, view defined, but this is the view that's selected. And we simply right click on configuration again and hit paste. And what it's done is essentially copied all the attributes from 
the system options view over to this one. And because <clears throat> where we copied it from was a text based view or text list based view, it's mapped everything over. Okay. So that is, uh, it's given us a head start. Okay. Everything else is retained. Our date time, blah, blah, blah. This we're going to change, obviously, system options. We're not in system options. So we'll go ahead and click edit. And the first thing I want to do is remove system options. And I can just simply right click and hit delete or select delete, or I can hit the delete key. That's entirely up to you, whichever you want to do. In this case, I selected uh, the delete menu option. Now let's revisit this battery indicator because uh, I believe it should work from this view. Mm. So metadata image, uh, battery, it doesn't work from here either. Oh my goodness. I need to get that done. All right. I'm going to have to hold off on doing that for now. That's unfortunate. I'm going to leave it though. Um, I'll leave that for a follow-up video so I can circle back to this and show you how you can uh, create a battery indicator, but I'll certainly leave the image here. It's not going to show anything, obviously. Um, but let's focus on um, the wheel. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the wheel container and align it to the right, at least for now. And we're going to add a new image on the left hand side here. And uh, I'm going to add a new group. And I'm going to say video. And I'm going to move this down here. So it sits below the bars, but above the background. And because this is the group that's currently selected, the menu is here. So I'm going to select image and I'm going to call this, um, if I could spell video border. Uh, and before I get too carried away, I want to create a container. Again, I'm going to use a grid. I'm going to call this video, con whoops, video container. And I'm going to move the video border into the video container. The video border is going to match the size of its container. Okay. And I'm going to lock that down. We're not quite done though. And now what we want, well, actually I'm not done. <laughs> I'm going to select a video border. We want to select graphics and carbon border. And by default, when you select an image, the um, stretch property is set to uniform. So as I increase the size of the container, the image retains, I guess, if you will, its aspect ratio. Okay. So it doesn't... Uh, uh, stretch one way or another. So what you can do, I actually want to, I actually want to keep this option, but, um, but I'll just show you if I set it to fill. All right. So, um, as I change the size of the video container, it is indeed, uh, stretching the image within it. But as you can see, depending on how I size the parent, 
the image is being just you know it's being distorted right and that's not something I want. I want to kind of retain its shape. So um, I'm going to set it back to uniform and just play with the size of the container here. That's good enough. <clears throat> Now, really, it's just a case of, okay, how, you know, how do I want this to look? How big is our wheel? Our wheel is, like, yay big. Our video container is kind of up there. I'll give it a bit of a gap. I've got a bit of a gap between the two. I'm just going to make this video container just a tad smaller. Like so. And I'm just eyeballing this. So, you know, pretty much the gap here is pretty much the same here. And then with the text, I'm going to change. Um, let's see. We can really kind of bring it down. Like so. And <clears throat> this wheel has a, a shadow effect on it, if you remember. And what I want to do, for consistency's sake, I want the same shadow uh, effect to be applied to the video container. All right. So again, it's just a simple case of right-click on the wheel container and select Copy. And then right-click on Video Container paste properties, I'm now going to select paste effect. All right. And it has indeed created a shadow, if you can see here. Okay. Now we've got one thing missing on the video container. I certainly don't want to see this textured background. Okay. So on the video container, I want to change the background color from transparent to black. Okay. Now I could have easily have changed that to like a very dark gray or what have you, but I'm settling with black. Okay. So now what we want is to place a video inside this black space. Okay. So Again, this is a, another reason why I created a container for this. So again, with this grouping, video grouping, I'm going to add a selected item video. And I'm going to move it into the container. And um, what I'm going to do is kind of I'm going to zoom in again using the control key and uh, zoom in, zoom out on the scroll wheel. I'm going to place the video kind of just slightly overlapping the border. And as I mentioned, the elements are background to foreground. So the video border, I'm going to move above the selected item video. Okay. So now the video is behind the border and both of these elements are contained within a container. So whatever we do with the container, if we move it around, these elements will move with it. Okay. And again, you want to test this. So double click on the gamepad and scroll up down.
And we have a problem here. Super Nintendo Entertainment. See, it's being truncated. So that's a problem. And we can fix that by scrolling down on the wheel properties. If I remember to unlock it. <clears throat> Where is it? Wheel properties. I want to wrap. Like so. Okay. Make sure the gamepad is visible. Cool. All right. Now, another thing um, you may want to engage here is auto save. <coughs> Excuse me. So on the menu here, auto save is currently off, but if you want, it's entirely up to you, the frequency of um, how often it uh, automatically saves your design. Like I said, I've got it set off, but it's up to you if you want it every five minutes. Okay, so you can do that. Um, is there anything else that we want to do on here? I guess we could do something kind of crazy. So I want to fill this space with something, okay? I mean, you can clearly see that this is the platform you've selected, but it would be nice if we actually did something with it up here, okay? So let's, let's see what we can, oh, let's see what we can come up with. And again, I want it to be below the glass. So whatever I do, it's got to be below the glass. So we have this layered appearance. Um, so again, I'm going to use another container. I'm going to use grid. I'm going to put it below glass just so that I don't forget. And... Uh, mm, It's going to be around about here, right? Around about that size. So from this point, so if I zoom in, it's around about from that point to here, it's like within the bar. like so and we want something to be within this container all right so just bear with me so this is going to be selected content container whoops And what do I want? I want an image. I want to fill the parent. And what do I want in here? Let's see what we have for metadata. Okay. Now we can go with What can we go with? Mm. We can go with random fan art. Um, so let's see what that will do. Um, so it will pick 
fan art for a game that's associated with this platform. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's set to um, uniform. Let's see. Let's see if I select uniform to fill. And it's picked another. Interesting. No fan art for Atari 800. Atari Lynx. Capcom. So we have. <coughs> Excuse me. We have graphics. Okay. All right. Now, this doesn't look very cool. And actually, I've forgotten to do one more thing. This selected content container should actually be below the bars. Okay. All right. So, like that. But even so, this doesn't look very good because, as you can see, the image is extending. I, I want the image to be kind of constrained within this shape. All right. So there is a special technique for that. But let me just change this to random. And as you can see, our auto save just kicked in. So this is a random game fan art. So for this container, I want it to match the shape of uh, the space within this 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 bar. OK. And so you select the content container and we scroll all the way down to the bottom to an opacity mask. OK, and I'm going to pick image. Folder. Graphics. Mask which just so happens to be the shape of this area. Okay. And I want to pick like that. What if I do uniform? Nope. I think I had it set perfectly. Should be okay. Let me pick a different platform. Yeah. Now, I don't really want to see partial image like this. All I wanted to do was just to add some kind of texture, add some, you know, color uh, as a background. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the random game art, game fan art to have a blurred effect. Okay. And I'm going to change the blur radius and as I do that it's actually spilling over over here and that's fine let me just zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about so it's spilling over here and here and what I need to do is select the content container and I want to clip to region okay and that should ensure that any graphic operations are within that masked shape. Okay. So let me pick a different platform. Mm, it's still not doing it. Let's see. Do I want uniform? Do I want fill? Um, this is always a tricky one. All 
right this is going to be quite quite the thing actually what i'm going to do i'm going to remove the blur radius or the blur effect from the image itself and Let's see. I want to make sure it's aligning. Yeah, that's good. Is it? And I want it below. Like that, something like that. Okay, now it looks like, as, as I zoom in, so you can see that we have the background. <clears throat> the image is behind the bars, but the glass is over the top of the image. So it has this layered effect. I think it looks pretty cool. All right, but I, I don't want it. I don't want the, uh, the image to be this sharp. I do, I do want it kind of blurred. All right, just to add some kind of texture, but we'll get there in a second. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do with the image here, I'm going to introduce another UI element. And it's a dock. I'm going to add that to the container. And I want that to be filling the parent and then I'm going to move the image into the dock and then the image itself uh, let's see I can say centered centered I believe I can control that on the dock at the dock level as well is that right I want the image to be auto sized, auto sized. There you go. So now what we're getting is like the center of the image uh, of the fan art image being displayed the way it's kind of cropping. <clears throat> so now I want to try and add either the blurred effect to the image or the dock, one of the two. Mm, and let's try it against the image again. Uh, and on the dock, clip to region. Let's try it. I want to blur it without it spilling over. There you go. So all I wanted really was just some color, um, just some kind of colored texture really based on um, some fan art associated with that platform. Okay. So I've blurred it out. But also what I want to do is, is kind of change the opacity of that image. Not drastically. I don't want it completely see-through. Okay. But I don't want it to be like uber bright. And another way that I can fix that without using uh, opacity is the mask image I used to force um, to force the content to be in this shape. I can actually overlay that image over the top. So let's see. I'm going to add. <clears throat> I'm 
going to add another image. I'm going to place it above the dock. I want it to fill the parent. Uh, I'm going to call this masked image. And then we scroll down and it's graphics and it's mask. Yeah. And then, like I said, by default, whenever you add a new image, it always sets to uniform. I'm going to change that to fill. Yeah. Now, this isn't helping us so far because this is a white object. And I'm going to select a new effect for this image. I'm going to call it monochrome. And right now it's jet black, but we can alter the alpha or the opacity value. Or I thought I could. Actually, no, I want black. What am I talking about? I want jet black. Sorry. I didn't want white. I wanted black. And now what I can do, I can alter the opacity of that image so it's providing a, a like a dark tint over the um over the fan art okay because i didn't want it too bright so let me zoom out just to see where we're at and let me pick a different platform So as you can see, it's just given us varied colors. It's just so it's different, okay? It's just so that that space is being filled. There's something in it. All right. And now that we've done that, what I'm going to do is um, on top of this masked image, I actually want to display the uh, platform that you've currently got selected. All right. So, um, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy the date field. All right. And, uh, I'm going to paste in place. I want it above this. Okay. And, uh, I'm just going to give it, you know, the selected item name. And I did that just because of the font. And um, I'm going to make it auto size on both the width and the height of the text field. And we we'll scroll down to metadata. And this time we're going to pick, um, hmm. well, I guess we can pick platform name. There is another one we can pick, like title. Well, that's really our filter. So I'm just going to pick platform name. I'm sorry. All right. Now, as you can see, they're of all various lengths. Okay. And I really want to kind of fill up this space. So the trick to this is using a UI element called Viewbox. All right. So I'm going to move that again into the uh, container up here and the view box is going to match the size of its parent okay again this area and now what i'm going to do 
I want to horizontally and vertically center the content within the view box. I'm going to move the uh, selected item into the view box. Now watch what will happen as I select up and down. Okay. It's shrinking the content so it, it fits. Okay. You see that? It's not perfect. <laughs> especially when it comes to Super Nintendo Entertainment System, all right? But we can fix that. Um, so what we're going to do on the text field, because we gave it an auto size, we want to give maximum width settings. So I believe the current width for the text field is 1026. So I'm going to change the max to, let's say, max 800 on the width. Uh, and while I'm at it, let's give it a margin buffer either side, right? So I'm going to say 50. It looks like it's going to be more than that. 70, yeah, and then 70, yeah, that doesn't look half bad, let me just remove that maximum a sec, uh, let's increase this to 80, mm, let's make it 90, 90, something like that. Okay, and again, we'll select Steam. Now, you may not like how big this gets. So again, we can control that. So the current height is 37. What if I go to that? What's the, what's the height? Mm. Let's say the maximum. I'm really just curious what this would do. Is that? I don't think that's quite right, right? Trying to remember what controls this. Just for the sake of argument, let me just change the maximum height on the view box here and then select arcade. Yeah, it's the it's the object within it not the view box or is it the view box let's not have that let's forget that's too that's too big
Oops. That's the opposite, isn't it? Yeah. Let's scroll through the list again. Because I want some kind of consistency, but at the same time, um, I do want it to kind of grow and shrink just a little bit. Yeah, so it did shrink a little bit. Yeah. Whereas everything else kind of increased in size. All right. And I still think I need a better margin. It's too close to the, like a hundred, a hundred. How's that? I think that looks better. Okay. So we'll save it. So we have a random game in the background associated with the Sony PlayStation, just to give us some color. Yeah, it's looking good. Although, as I'm looking at it, with this one, it didn't pick up any um, fan art. So I can actually see the texture in the background. So let's fix that. And it's important that we fix that now, because again, I wish to copy this view to another view. And the last thing I want to do is go back, edit this view, go to another view and make the same changes in there. So it's better to do it now. <clears throat> so let's get it to a point where banner is not selected. I think it was, was it scum? It was one of these steam. Of course, it's behaving now. I'm getting fan art all the time. Let's see. Selected content container. It's using a transparent. Again, what we'll do, we'll just simply say it's black. So now we have a black background for our container. And um, so if none of this is visible, we'll have a black background and we won't see this wallpaper or this uh, textured background in here. I think that's fine. So let's just double check that. Yep. See, it's black. We don't see the texture anymore. And whenever we do have artwork, it will appear over the black and under the glass. And the text is under the glass, but over the, over the image, but below the red bars. Okay. So I think that looks okay. And again, we're going to copy this view, this configuration, and we're going to select games view. Again, it's not a filled ellipse, so there is no content, but it is the uh, current selected view.
So right click on the default configuration, right click, select paste. And again, because the text games view is a text list based wheel, everything mapped over with the exception of the artwork being used behind the scenes. All right, so we're gonna make a t slight tweak to that. And of course, random game fan art does not exist. That's more associated with a platform. So we're going to fix that. And again, it's not even showing it because it's not valid for this view. So what we want is just simply, um, what is it? Game fan art or just fan art. There you go. That's it. That's all I had to do. So now what it will do is pull fan art based on the selected game. All right. And that was the only tweak we had to make because the metadata is specific from platform view to game view. Uh, for that particular um, particular view here. All right. So that's three views that we've created so far. Um, I don't know how long I've been recording, but um, it's pretty quick. Now, what I want to do <clears throat> is copy, copy the game view to actually, we'll copy the platform view. And we want to utilize graphical wheels. Okay. So we're going to copy this platform view and we're going to copy it to um, another platform view that allows graphical wheels. Let's say we'll go with wheel style that's horizontal. And that would be any of these. So I'm going to pick uh, platform wheel one filters. And again, right click on the configuration, select paste. All right. So it's mapped everything over except for the wheel. Okay. The wheel is now horizontal and uh, it's supposed to be graphical. All right. So as you can see, it's horizontal. So let's fix that. We'll go in edit. wheel container. Uh, I'm going to lock the wheel a second just so that I can uh, change the container to where I want it to be. Let's just make sure I've got uh, locked to canvas. And by locking to canvas, it allows me to not move an element off screen. Okay. So my X position is zero and my width should be, uh, should be 2560, I think. Yeah. I'm going to increase the, the height. And while I'm at it, the video container now, <clears throat> I'm going to center it. So align center and then press and hold the shift key and I'm cursoring up and let's just take a quick glance at where the wheel starts. As you can see the, the blue box. And as you can see, the smart guides are in effect. It's saying 
<clears throat> because the width of the wheel is taking up the width of the view, the center line, uh, the wheel is, sorry, the wheel is centered or the video is centered with uh, the wheel. So it's giving this orange dotted line to say this is perfectly centered. All right. But anyway, um, I'm going to move the video up so there's kind of equal spacing between the bottom of this red bar to the top of the wheel i think that's good enough again i'm just eyeballing it so let's get this wheel fixed all right so unlock the wheel and there's a ton of properties in here um, and i'm not going to go through all of them uh, in this particular video. But um, what I want to do, I want to pick um, platform clear logos. There they are. And we will change some of the properties on here, okay? So they're all kind of jammed up. And I do want to increase the size because I have allowed the wheel height to be yay so let's fill it up so that's the first thing we'll do we'll change the um, uh, item size here to um, I don't know 12 let's see what we get 11 9 Eight, whoops. Get in there. Uh, so that's the default size. And then what we'll do is for the item that's selected, we're going to make it, um, I don't know, let's see if we can get away with a 120% maybe let's just uh scroll left and right here let's just see how they all fit within the wheel yeah see the atari one is too big so 120 percent is too too large i'll make that 110 mm, it's still kind of big so we'll scroll up and we'll make this slightly smaller overall there you go so that fits um, and then yeah it's weird how the images are all over the, the place size wise Okay, all right. Well, let's change the um, uh, item spacing. Uh, let's do, is it two? That might be too much. Whoops. Let's do four. And on the item that's selected, let's use the same spacing. That's way too much. So let's do two and two. I think it has to be, yeah, it's a fraction. Let's do uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. There you go. We're getting somewhere now. Let's scroll through the list just to see what it looks like kind of large let's change the size of the items overall I want it smaller yeah and then I think we've got the luxury of actually ramping up the selected item to be much larger 
And again, it's just a case of looking at the content that you have, making sure it fits within the wheel. It doesn't get truncated. And we'll alter the spacing again. We're, we're still a little bit on the cramped side. That Atari, wow, that's huge. All right. Well, wow. okay. That's that's a big one. But nothing else is that big. That's crazy. All right. I'm still going to alter the spacing. Or do I need to? I don't think I need to. We don't have an image for 3DO. Let's make that 0 0.7. 0 0.7. So we've spaced it out just a little bit more. That's monstrous. All right, so we have, uh, oh wow, the Xbox one. So again, we may need to, yeah, that's better. <clears throat> so we have one, two, three, four, five platforms visible. So let's see, visible count, it's five, whoops, it's five, and page size is five. And, and why it's important to set the visible count is so that, um, I can't remember what I had it set to before, Here, control Z to undo, ten. So... <coughs> With 10 being forced, it's going to be uh, doing uh, a lot of extra work for items that you don't even see on screen. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. That's what I'm going to set it to. <clears throat> and I know the left and the right item is barely visible, but you still want to include it. And even then, if they were actually on screen, then you probably want to add two to whatever the visible count is so you can handle the one on the left and the one on the right, even though that they're not uh, visible, okay? So anyway, I've got this set to five. And now that we've got our horizontal wheel, set up and you could alter the spacing the other thing I've noticed too <clears throat> is um, on the we'll, we'll alter the spacing on the uh, selected item so it's just a little bit further apart let's see on this one, just to give it a little bit more, I guess, dis distance, a little bit more separation from the items uh, left and right. Okay. And then what was the other thing I was going to do? I was going to do something. <clears throat> Now the wheel container, I still have a drop shadow. Is this true? It looks like it's still generating a drop shadow by the looks of things around all the items within that container, which is fine. I do want that. Um, 
Was this everything I wanted to do here? I'm going to kick myself otherwise. I think so. No, there was there was one more thing. Okay. So if you want the 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 wheel to be a little bit more snappy, a little bit more responsive, there's one property that you can alter here. So the default minimum animation speed is currently set to 400. I found that if you change it to 200 or 100, it's a lot more snappy. Okay. All right, so that's our uh, horizontal filters view. And we're going to copy this one. And we're going to copy it over to uh, a horizontal wheel games view. And again, I'm just going to use wheel one. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paste. All right. Now, remember, I copied it from a platform. So this image up here is using random game fan art, which is not true. So we want to pick the right metadata image. And that is game fan art or fan art. Like so. There you go. All right. And uh, wheel Uh, it's going on here. There is nothing being displayed. For I find that odd. What did I do? Uh, the wheel defaulted to whatever to its defaults. strange we re-add the wheel I've never seen this before Very odd. Okay. All right. Like I said, this is a early access build. So, um, 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 um. see what we can do. Again, we've got some assists here. 
Uh, so I went with the default, but I can certainly make the overall a little bit bigger. Let's just see how, yeah, that's being truncated. So that fits. Yeah. All right. No fan art for Crazy Ivan. All right, so that is a horizontal clear logo wheel for the game view. And that's something I'll need to take a look at. I don't know why that wheel was misbehaving. Um, <clears throat> it shouldn't have done that. But I do want to change the... Uh, Animate uh, animation speed to 200. And that is pretty much it. Okay. So now <clears throat> we have one, two, three, four, five views constructed. We've got uh, graphical wheels and we've got text wheels and we have the system options. OK, we're ready to uh, publish to Big Box. OK, so now we're ready to publish. OK, but before we do, there is one thing that you may want to do before publishing. And if you just hit this configuration or settings button here, I did say that I wasn't going to go over this, but I will just for a couple of properties. So um if you select views you can actually specify what you want your default platform and game view to be right now they've defaulted to the text uh base versions but if you want to go into the the graphical wheels um, by default you just simply click the drop down and select platform wheel one and the games list it would be a horizontal wheel one and that's it. Okay. And because we changed the properties, we have a asterisk against these two properties here to show that we've deviated from the default. Okay. That's all I've done here. So hit okay. And then we go up to the main menu and uh, select publish theme. And that's it. So the theme has been created and published to the correct location for Big Box. So we'll close CTC and we'll open up Big Box. <clears throat> and in Big Box, we'll go to Options, Views theme currently default getting started with ctc was our uh, theme and this is our systems options view a new beta uh not now okay so all right so i can hit back and like I said, I, we specified the um, uh, graphical wheel as our initial platform view, as opposed to the text version. And I know that you're seeing some gaps in the wheel because the images don't exist uh, on my system. As you can see, this is light gun game, so I don't have an image associated with that. And 
if you notice, the font is changing size ever so slightly in the, uh, the area above. We're getting some nice uh, colored textures appearing. So let's uh, let's select a platform here. So um, let's pick. What are we gonna pick? PS2. And as you can see, we're in the horizontal wheel uh, games view. As we had instructed. So yeah, I think this looks. Uh, I think this looks pretty cool. And then obviously, um, you just hit the view key on uh, Big Box, and I want to go into text list. Okay, so here's our text list version. Now I didn't select wrapping or, or did I select wrap? I did select wrap, that's right, I remember now. And if I exit and go back to the platform view, I hit the view key, text list, and there we go. All right, so real basic theme, but um, you know, there's some, uh, there's some depth to it. Um, using uh, some of the basic effects like shadowing, uh, blurring, and simply just layering uh, elements um, between other elements. Uh, like I said, with the um, uh, date time and uh, selected, uh, selected uh, platform or game. And I may have kind of messed up on one of these just realized that the selected game is not showing in the top it's always showing the associated platform that's that's fine but uh, yeah there you go that's how um, you can build a theme relatively quickly uh, certainly faster than you could do it not understanding uh, XAML um, that's for sure. <laughs> um, and it will scale up and scale down uh, accordingly. So like I said, um, if you were on your desktop and your desktop supports, you know, 4K or even above, um, and you set the aspect ratio to 16.9, anything that you do um, in CTC and you publish, and uh, someone on the forum takes your theme and they're running it on their laptop or even, like I said, a handheld Windows device like a Asus ROG Ally, um, it will end up running at 1080p, okay? Or if they had a, an older GPD uh, Win device, they could be running that on uh, 720p, okay? But the aspect ratio is the same, so it will scale up and scale down accordingly. Um, and then, um, uh, so you don't have to handle any of that at all. All of that is uh, is being handled behind the scenes. So at least your theme will still look the way it was intended and the way it was designed when you designed it uh, initially. Okay, regardless of the uh, end users. Uh, resolution or even aspect ratio come to think of it okay so I'm gonna stop there I will do some more videos to go over some more um, uh, complicated or more advanced kind of features but at least I hope 
from what I've done with this example um, will be enough for you guys to get a head start and jump in and just simply play around. And I'll certainly post what I've done with this theme um, on Patreon just so that you can grab it and, uh, you know, play around with the, the project uh, and tweak it up to your heart's content. All right. So I'm done. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was of use. Um, so until the next uh, how-to video, take care.